Hey, good day. I am Meredith. I am here with our message for Friday, the 31st of March, 2023. We're tuning into the energy atmosphere. As you know, this is what we do here on this channel. The sun's in Aries and the moon is in Leo. We've got some interesting stuff coming up. Today's the last day of March, of course, and I was taking a look at April. I was looking ahead in the Magical Moon Diary. So we've got a full moon on the 6th in Libra. And then check out Thursday, the 20th of April. It's a bit busy there, huh? <laughs> the sun's going to move into Taurus. We have a new moon in Aries. A total solar eclipse happening as well as the sun enters Taurus. And then Friday the 21st, Mercury goes retrograde. Wah, wah, wah. I know. <laughs> That's cool, though. Ooh, we're going to go deep with those eclipse energies. Hmm. Oh, we'll be pulling cards around that. Okay. What's going on in the energy atmosphere today? We're having an interesting shuffle. Three cards fell out together first. So let's start there. We have the Magician. <laughs> Ooh, Temperance. Talk about making your dreams come true. Wow, and the Hermit. Look at that. Three major arcana to start with. So the magician is the reminder that we have all the tools, all the skill, all the resources within us to co-create with the divine. So there's no, uh, <laughs> did we talk, we talked about excuses and procrastination this week. There's no excuse. That's what I'm feeling here off this magician card. Then we have temperance. So we have, uh, the blessing of Archangel Michael on that card, though we also have divine alchemy at work for us, right? Connected with the magician. So there's there's no reason why not to be taking action in the direction of the quest that beckons you. That's at the heart of the hermit card. A quest beckons. Lift your lantern of enlightenment. See the light, see the way, follow the path, listen to your intuition. Use your skill, use your talent, and your resources to create, co-create with the divine all. Everything that you're holding in heart space. And the next one that fell out of the shuffle is the Queen of Cups. <laughs> oh, I heard recently one of the tarot readers that I enjoy, she was speaking on this card and she mentioned how the Queen of Cups is very keen on sharing what is of value. And what is of most value to this queen is emotional fulfillment. She's emotionally awake, aware, alert, intelligent, and intimate. And she accepts no less than all of that. Beautiful, right? Because the whole suit of cups is about emotional fulfillment. And that's really where we groove at, isn't it? That emotional satisfaction of what we're investing in our life. How we are... Uh, in harmony, in alignment with our intuitive messages and how we conduct our lives as a result of our intuitive messages. And many of us know from vast experience that we've had the intuition and then we have not taken action upon it. And we know how that feels. So the contrast is so stark and so uncomfortable when we do not follow this very valuable inner inner guidance system that we won't sacrifice this any longer. So I love seeing this message. It's a, it's a beautiful confirmation of recognizing how amazing and incredible your life experience becomes as you listen to your own inner oracle, your own valuable inner voice. You kind of turn down the static of everything beyond yourself. Hear this, take action on this. And then you are ever answering the quest of what's in your own heart center. And you are ever in creation with that energy. And it creates a level of celebration, excited enthusiasm, and then excited anticipation to continue to conduct your world in this vibe, right? Next, what's next? 
I also feel that these first three cards that came out together are quite a response to other cards we received this week, encouraging us to make way. Yeah, exactly. Make way for everything. This is the everything card in tarot, Ten of Pentacles. It's fulfillment in a layered way. It is considered a generational card, like one generation passing uh, all of its abundance onto the next generation, right? And I feel that this is the multi-layered, exceptionally complex uh, representation of our spiritual journey. We keep our eye on what's valuable to us, which is the overflowing Ace of Cups here on the Queen of Cups card by listening to the intuition and answering our inner call the beckoning quests and pursuing those quests and coming away uh, with more knowledge, making way for greater wisdom through our intuitive, our intuitive channel downloaded messages. And this is what leads us on this quest to the 10 of coins, absolute fulfillment in every aspect of our lives. How beautiful. What's next in the cards? <laughs> well, you're going to be so glad you saw the Ten of Coins first because there's the Ten of Swords. And, you know, though, this is, this is a delight to see as well because I feel that this is us shedding a skin, shedding a layer that may have been holding us back from realizing the fulfillment of that Ten of Pentacles. This card's called the Fallen Master. And when you read about the card, it, the traditional meanings or some of the alternative meanings, the master gets up and goes on from this card, having taken with him or her, taking with them the everlasting strength and the brilliant clarity of the Ace of Swords to the power of 10. That's profound, isn't it? Because we're moving into the, the great love and the adventurous opportunity on offer to us through the Ace of Coins to the power of 10 here in the Ten of Pentacles. And we need our inner vision, Hermit and Queen of Cups, to, to see this path, to blaze this trail for ourselves. And we also have to set down... Uh, what is no longer of service, what is superfluous to us. And we've seen plenty of this in the cards in recent weeks with the death card and the high priestess. They've shown up together more than once in a reading. We've seen the empress, you know, we've already given birth to what is in evolution on our foundation in the now. And we're celebrating that magic over here with temperance, the magician and the hermit. And then coming with this Ten of Swords is the Four of Cups, the, the continuing message for us that there is more coming. We already have tremendous bounty here. We have great fulfillment. And because we're living in appreciation and gratitude of that, taking time to smell the roses, stop and smell the roses, count our blessings here, uh, have recognition, recollection for what is of great value to us, which is our own inner Ace of Cups, we're creating a way for more cups. So that message is repeating for us, make way because there's something still yet to come. And you may not see it coming because you're so focused on the gratitude over here and what a beautiful vision that is. So it's not like you have to necessarily turn around and take a look back. Uh, more of the love, bliss, joy, happiness on overflow is on its way in because you are already celebrating your love, bliss, joy, and happiness. Woo! All right, let's take a look at the bottom of the deck. Wow. Here's the star card. I love when the star card comes out with the magician in a reading because that for me is you can't miss your target when it comes to your vision, and your dream of fulfillment. You cannot miss two powerful manifestation cards, three of them actually, with the temperance card right there. And there's that divine alchemy is what we don't see coming in the Ace of Cups. I feel that that's what's flowing into the Ace of Cups on the four. So 
surprise and delight on offer to us. Then next we have the Page of Wands. This is pretty sweet as well. The suit of wands is very fiery, passionate. It also has us engaging our talent and our skill in a very motivated way and perhaps in a fresh new leg of the journey here with this particular page. I also feel that this is backing up the magician. <laughs> wow, look at this, two of cups. This is the inner unity. This is our inner harmony. Uh, this card is the ever strengthening and deepening bond within your self relationship. So this is the vibe we're in and this is the vibe that we are being met within. Amazing. Look at this. Ten of Cups and the Sun. Wow. Wow. Ace of Cups to the power of ten. See, I feel this uh, energy that's kind of gathering, collecting, coalescing, if you will. And it's coming from Temperance and the Magician and the Star all working together together. And I feel that the Two of Cups is representative of just how stable we are within ourselves. And that's an energy space that is essential to be occupying in order to support a Ten of Cups, Ace of Cups to the power of Ten, Queen of Cups, Four of Cups, Ten of Coins, right? We have three Tens on the table right now. And then we have the sun shining on all of this gorgeous happiness. So we must be in this kind of self-supportive, interdependent energy in order to support a lifestyle that brings these kinds of frequency, vibrations, and cards to our table. So good on you. Congratulations. Keep doing what you're doing because that is working. <laughs> Yes, emphatically, yes. I'm picking up angel answers right now and I'm shuffling and I am praying to see our emphatic yes because what a great confirmation to the reading, right? <laughs> our first card, be assertive. Emphatically be assertive. You have to be. <laughs> When it comes to your dream, no one's going to realize it for you, right? Be assertive with your vision, Queen of Cups. It is of great value. Next. Because you're ready. <laughs> I know some of you are like, ah, uh, I've been ready for years. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, the universe had other ideas and said, you still have a little bit more to do. A little further to travel. Next. Oh, hey, I'll take it. It's not the emphatic yes. It's still a yes. <laughs> One more. Oh, on the floor. Ooh, a couple of them, actually. <laughs> oh, this is funny. I swear, it's just a comedy routine with the cards right now. Here's the emphatic no. <laughs> Though it comes with big happy changes. So for me, that no is I emphatically will accept nothing less than <laughs> the big happy changes. It's also a connection for me to the Queen of Cups, because she knows what is of value. And sometimes it is difficult to say no in certain situations, though the no eventually becomes the big happy change, right? So check that out. There may be a space, there may be a place where you, you have to put your foot down and say no. And that may be tied into some of the alchemy that we're seeing in Temperance alongside the Magician card, we may uh, encounter some energies that we feel really don't go together. So we have to yield those over to divinity and allow the divine alchemy to have its way, excuse me, with the energies for our highest and greatest benefit. So we may have a temporary and emphatic no as energies come together. 
for our highest and greatest fulfillment, which we're witnessing right here in the reading. Final word from Shaman's Dream Oracle. We've got whale song resonating. Yeah, we're resonating, all right. We're resonating with our deepest truth and our greatest harmony. Have a beautiful Friday, everyone. Peace, love, joy, blessings. Namaste. Oh, goodness. We've got technical difficulties again. Farewell for now, everyone.